Hi, this is Mrs. Sloan, and we're continuing on with photosynthesis. So this is video two. Video one was an overview of photosynthesis, the anatomy of the chloroplast, and the reactants and products of photosynthesis and the major steps. Now, here in video two, we are focusing on the light-dependent reaction, and that's the part that occurs on the thylakoid membrane. So let me make myself a little bit smaller and get in presentation mode. Here we go. Ah, I'm the sun, yay. All right, so here we go. Now, the first thing we wanna talk about is obviously you need light, right, to do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. So on your notes, remember the notes are down in the um, descriptor of the video, column one, you type those in, column two, add in pictures that are helpful for you. Um, most of the light, that hits the Earth's surface is visible light, is visible light. And I'm gonna talk about visible light in just a minute. You will see in mini me, um, just a couple other things. Higher energy is screened out by the, what's the protective layer? The ozone layer, right? And lower energy is screened out by water vapor and CO2. So let's go take a look at that visible light. Here is the entire electromagnetic um, spectrum. Visible light runs from like, um, here I'm covering this up, maybe about, 380 or so to 740 or so. This is your visible light, and that's what plants use, okay? Now, just so you know, uh, nanometers is what I was talking about. Let's take a look up here. The largest wavelengths of light are things like AM radio. Now, AM radio is not gonna make your plants grow. You know why? because they don't have any ability to capture that size. They, this right here, visible light, pigments, they are able to capture that light energy and they can excite electrons using that light energy. If you start going smaller, UV rays, yes, there are plenty of organisms that, that with the UV rays, but these plants are not using that part of the electromagnetic spectrum, just the visible light. Smaller still are x-rays, et cetera. So on your notes, um, the when it says that most of the light that hits the Earth's surface is visible light, and this is what your plants can use. So what happens when light hits something? Well, one thing that can happen is the light can bounce right off and it can get reflected, okay? Another is that it can get absorbed, right? And then a third option is transmitted, okay? So today, I let's go over colors. Today, I'm wearing a dress that is red and black, okay? The black portion of my dress is absorbing every bit of visible light that's coming from my light switch and through the window in front of me. It's absorbing all of that light. The red part of my dress, right, is absorbing everything but what color? Hopefully you said red, because the red is getting reflected to you, and that's why you can see it. I am absorbing purple, I am absorbing green, I am absorbing orange, but I am reflecting red to you, okay? Transmitted would be if light could pass through this dress to the other side. That would mean transmitted. So think about plants. What color are plants? Green, right? Did you say green? Okay, so they're absorbing the red light, they're absorbing the orange light and the blue light. The only light they're not absorbing is what? Green. So now think about this. If you took a plant and grew it in only green light, do you think it would grow well? Why or why not? Well, can it use green light? No, it can't, okay? Now, there are some pigments that can, but the bulk of the pigments, right, are not going to be able to use green light. That's why if you put a plant with just only green light, it would be like putting it in the dark, okay? So now, let's talk about that a little bit more, okay? On pigments and photosynthesis, you have light is either absorbed, it is transmitted, um, or it is reflected. When you look at an absorption spectrum, let me show you here. Oh. Look, I have another picture I forgot about. Look at this, uh, here you can see the chloroplast. Look, we can see the double membranes. Do you remember what these are from our first video? Those are thylakoid membranes, yes. And the space around it is the stroma. The pigments are embedded right here in the thylakoid membrane. So you can see what light is reflected. 
green light. That's why plants appear green. And then here, other colors of the visible spectrum get absorbed, and then some light will pass right through that plant. It gets transmitted. Boy, I really like that slide I put in there. Okay, so when you look at the absorption spectrum, okay, so here's how much is getting absorbed, right? And then here on your x-axis, you've got the wavelengths. Remember, I talked to you about visible light um, of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, let's look. We got three pigments here, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. Carotenoids, what does that sound like? Carrots, hmm, put a pin in that. Here's chlorophyll A, what can it absorb? If we look at that dark green chlorophyll A, it's down here, this is where it peaks, down here in the purples and the blues, and then it drops low, low, low. And then here, it's like the bookend, here comes the dark green again, here in the oranges and the reds. Now, if you also have chlorophyll B, you're gonna catch some of those colors that chlorophyll A missed because where it's lower, where chlorophyll A is here, chlorophyll B is picking up a lot of those blues, even a little bit of that blue green, and then it drops low and it catches just some of the colors just to the inside of chlorophyll A. All right, now carotenoids, I hear carrot in that, and look what they absorb. They absorb um, somewhat here and then even more so, but they're capturing all the purples and the blues and the greens, some of the greens. And look over here, the oranges and the reds. And carrots appear what? Like orange, right? So that makes sense because they're capturing the other colors. So on your notes, it says absorption spectrum. And this is a graph of the percent of light absorbed by each wavelength by each pigment. Okay, so chlorophyll A and B have a prominent role. They absorb violet, blue, red, and they reflect what? What are they reflecting? Green, good. The carotenoids are accessory pigments and they absorb violet, blue, and green. You don't have to memorize that and they reflect the yellow and the red. Red. So next, let me show you here. This is a spectrophotometer. Now, what this will do, okay, is it can measure, and back in the day, um, we used to always do a lab in AP Bio where you would put pigments and you would shoot different amounts of light through it and you would measure how much um, of a chemical got reduced and how, how that light could pass through that. But what you would find out from that is if you put all those pigments together, here is your summary absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A, B, and the carotenoids. So you can see here, these colors in the purples and the blues, dropping down at the green, and then again, up at the oranges and the reds. So that's if you're taking into account all of um, the different pigments. All right, next on our list, let's take a look here. What's going on here in the fall? Now, I live here in California. We don't really have a fall unless you're in Mammoth or somewhere like that. Um, but there are areas that have like a true fall and they're gorgeous where all the leaves change color. What's happening here? Well, you have a highly suggestive reading and thinking, I believe, on this. But one, one of the items here is that as it gets colder, chlorophyll starts to break down. And some of these other pigments, as it gets colder and the days are shorter, um, are more successful and, and have greater efficacy in capturing the light. So that's why you see some of these other pigments showing. If you look out your window right now at any tree, if you still have green trees, you're predominantly, what you're seeing most is the chlorophyll A's and the B's are out there. But these other pigments are there too, but they're just masked because you have so much chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. All right, now let's start talking about photosystems, okay? So take a look at this reaction. Um, this is a summary, a little summary table here. And so we can see here comes, like there's the double membrane, right? Let's look at all the things here. This shows us everything. Here's the sunlight coming in. The light reactions are going to occur on these thylakoid membranes of the grana, right? Water is coming in. We're gonna split water in half and you're gonna get oxygen. And then you're gonna get these hydrogen and electrons, but the electrons we're gonna take to be part of our light reaction. And we're gonna to start to concentrate hydrogen ions. I'll show you that in just a minute, but you do get a byproduct here of oxygen. So you're splitting water, oxygen is a product. You are going to use those electrons from the water in order to reduce NADP. So you can see it leaving the light reaction here. You're also gonna use those electrons. You're gonna create a chemiosmotic gradient so you can generate ATP. You will then use the ATP and the reduced NADP here in your Calvin cycle. Your Calvin cycle reacting, you're going to need CO2 
And that's going to come through the um, stomata, the openings in the leaves, and then it's going to just diffuse into the chloroplast where it's getting consumed readily. And the CO2 will get fixed into glucose using ATP and reduced NADP. And then you can recycle oxidized NADP and ADP plus phosphate to be reused in a light reaction. So these things, you don't see these as like reactant product kind of things because they're just temporarily getting used. So dropping off energy and electrons, and they're gonna go pick up some more, et cetera. Okay, so what we're focusing now on the light reaction is these thylakoid membranes. And where I wanna focus next is on this photosystem. So I'm gonna start with a simpler diagram and then I'm gonna level up, okay? Now, I want you to just take in this picture. <laughs> just take in this picture for just a quick second. Look at free energy. Remember we talked about energy available to do work, right? Look at the two photosystems. You've got photosystem one and you have photosystem two. Now, photosystem one was discovered first and ultimately that's what's gonna reduce the NADP, but I'm gonna teach this left to right because it will make more sense to you this way. So I'm gonna start with photosystem two when I do this. Photosystem two or any photosystem is just a grouping of pigments that are able to capture the light energy and eventually transfer that light energy into a reaction center that can, ex and at this reaction center, the electrons will get very excited. Remember when we talked about in chapter six, that stair step? So these electrons at this reaction center will get jumped to a higher energy level, the top of the stairs, so they can go down the stairs in a series of redox reactions and you can harvest that energy, right? Imagine these as stairs, na -na 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 going down the stairs. You're gonna harvest that energy to create a hydrogen ion gradient, right? A difference in charge, pH, and concentration. We can use that when we concentrate, look right here, proton gradient. Remember what a proton is, right? Remember, hydrogen is made out of one proton and one electron. So when you lose the electron, all you have left is the proton. That's why it's called a proton gradient. You're gonna concentrate these hydrogen ions to the inside of those green hollow pancakes that we talked about in part one. Concentrate them in so when they go back out through ATP synthase complex, ATP synthase enzyme complex, you're gonna generate a whole bunch of ATP. You're gonna take these same electrons into photosystem one. So we, it, it's, we split water, we got oxygen and electrons, we excited them with the sun's energy, we used them here in photosystem two, and na 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 na. We make some ATP. Take the same electrons. We're not done with them. They're going for another ride. We excite them again with the sun's energy. This time, we don't bring them all the way down to where we did last time. We don't bring them to this all the way to the bottom. We stop them part way, keep them hot, and we use that to reduce NADP ox into reduced NADP. Okay, so what do we get when we're done with the light dependent reaction? We get reduced NADP and we get ATP. Now, if you'll notice right here, this is called non-cyclic photophosphorylation. I will show you cyclic photophosphorylation here in just a minute, but this is non-cyclic, which means there's an indoor and there's an outdoor. What's our indoor? Well, we're donating, water is donating electrons to the system. That's your indoor. They get excited, na 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 na. They get excited, little na na again. And then the outdoor is leaving as NADP reduced. So this right here that reduced the NADP, these right here, these electrons started right here with water. Came in and out, all right? Now, let me show you another picture of this. Okay, still not bad, not bad, right? Let me just go up here. So look down here at the bottom. This is photosystem two right here. You are splitting water, you're getting oxygen, and you're gonna get some electrons, which you took from hydrogen. This hydrogen is gonna contribute to our hydrogen ion gradient. Remember how we're concentrating them inside those green hollow pancakes, the green thylakoids, the grana, right? So they're gonna contribute to that. Then we're gonna take the electrons from hydrogen, we're gonna get them excited by the sun. And this happens specifically at the reaction center. So follow my little pointer here, okay? So the sun's rays go down and then all these different pigments, the light, see how it's jumping all around? It's like, oh, da, 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 the light, the energy, the energy, and then boom, it hits the reaction center, boom, 
and the electrons get excited starting at that reaction center. It's like if you were playing pinball or something, all right? Then here's your electron transport chain. Remember those stairs. So this is a na 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 na. And as those electrons move down the electron transport chain, there are a, there's one place in particular called PQ. And this particular molecule has the ability, when it's hanging onto the electron temporarily, it will take hydrogen ions from the stroma, the space around the pancakes, and bring it into the interior, into the lumen of those thylakoid membranes. Okay, so you've got the contributions of hydrogen right here from water to the inside. And then every time this electron transport chain goes, PQ is bringing more hydrogens to the interior. When you let those go back out, then you can make ATP. Take these same electrons, excite them a second time. This time, don't let them lose all their energy and give those electrons to NADP forming reduced NADP. Then, then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP, right, to your Calvin cycle, to your light independent reaction, and that's where you're going to be making your sugars. I know, that's why. Okay, so take a look at your notes, okay? Um, electron flow in the light reaction non-cyclic, okay? Photosystem two was discovered second. Water is split. Forming water is split, forming oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen atoms donate their electrons. So the hydrogen atoms donate their electrons and then become concentrated inside the thylakoid membranes. Okay. The electrons from that we got from hydrogen, which were part of water, they get excited by the sun, right? Um, so the electrons are excited by solar energy that was concentrated in the chlorophyll. A molecules of this reaction center, chlorophyll A mo molecules of the reaction center. Um, and then C, these electrons become so excited that they escape to neighboring electron acceptor molecules, continuing through and down the electron transport chain. So this is a na 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 na. This electron transport chain is a series of redox reactions. So I get electrons, I dump them off. I get electrons, I dump them off. But when you get to PQ in this chain, okay, that has the ability to take hydrogen ions from the stroma and concentrate them inside the thylakoid membrane, okay? So that would be, now I'm on D. Um, energy is captured by PQ. Um, as electrons move down the electron transport chain and are used to concentrate hydrogen ions, concentrate hydrogen ions to the interior of the thylakoid spaces, to the interior of the thylakoid spaces. The electrons are then passed on to photosystem one. They get to go on another ride, okay? Electrons are excited a second time by the solar energy. The electrons are ultimately passed to NADP, forming NADPH, so that's the reduced form. The NADPH will be used by the Calvin cycle, right, to donate those electrons to CO2 in order to form glucose. So the next part on here that I want to show you is, okay, so what I just showed you was non-cyclic photophosphorylation because the electrons come in and the electrons go out. So let me compare this, okay, to cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, now cyclic, photo, cyclic photophosphorylation is just used for backup for non-cyclic because non-cyclic is so much more efficient. This is like the ancient, you know, early versions of photosynthesis. So let's look to see what's happening here. So we still have our pigment center, we still have our reaction center, but notice we don't have the input of water into this part of the reaction, right? The electrons are coming from the pigment directly. You still have the sun's energy, you're still getting excited, you're still na 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 na, right? And you are able to move hydrogen ions from the um, stroma into the interior of the thylakoid. However, and those get to go back out so you can make ATP, but notice it's just going roundy, roundy, round, right? You don't have electrons going in and out. You just have electrons cycling around. So all you generate is ATP. You do not generate any reduced NADP.
Okay, so if you look on the electron flow in light reaction cyclic, which is not as efficient as non-cyclic, um, it's used by prokaryotes, and when there are high levels of oxygen, oxygen in eukaryotes, and when they're trying to avoid photorespiration, we'll talk about that in a minute, so put a pin in that, water is not split, and only ATP is formed, and only ATP is formed. Now, let's go into details of that thylakoid membrane and that electron transport chain. You ready? Take a breath in. Thank you, plants, for splitting water. Okay, now we look right here, okay? So this is one of those hollow green pancakes, right? Those thylakoid membranes. Look, I know this is tiny. Like, get in there and look. There's water right here. Water is split, and when you split, you get oxygen and you get electrons. It's H2O, so you get two hydrogen, two electrons. The hydrogens get swept and kept inside the space right here of this thylakoid membrane. How handy, because that's where we're trying to concentrate them. So here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons. Okay, so the sun travels in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets these electrons right here excited. So then they get passed through the electron transport chain, na 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 na. But partway through this electron transport chain is a special molecule called PQ, and PQ takes these hydrogen ions that are out in the stroma and brings them back into the interior of the thylakoid membrane. So you see that happening right here. Okay. Now we're all the way. We've moved now to the very bottom of the chain, and then here those same electrons are getting excited again now in photosystem one. Okay, and when they get excited, they're na 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 na, and they get handed handed off to NADP, forming reduced NADP. Now look right here. Look at this little special protein. His name is NADP reductase. So ACE means he's acting like an enzyme, right? And it's helping to reduce that NADP. Okay, so now we have a reduced NADP. Where's our ATP coming from? So if you look right here, we had the influx of hydrogen ions from water. Then PQ brought more hydrogen ions in. So when those hydrogen ions go back out, this is when you're going through your ATP synthase complex. That's when you can make a bunch of ATP because it's like a turnstile. So when they go back out, okay, um, they're coming back from a higher concentration, a difference in charge, a difference in pH, this chemiosmotic potential here. It's going back out and you are synthesizing ATP. So on your notes where it says ATP production, the interior of the thylakoid membrane serves as a reservoir for hydrogen ions coming from the splitting of water and from PQ. This generates an electrochemical gradient that is used to generate ATP through a process called chemiosmosis. Hydrogen ions move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration in the stroma using ATP synthase complex channel. As hydrogen ions use the ATP synthase complex channel, ATP is formed. All right, here comes the next part. Okay, if you were in my class, I would be teaching you a song right now to remember photosynthesis. And if you Google this, if you look on YouTube, there are several versions of my song on my YouTube channel, but I'm gonna show you where it comes from. So I'm gonna back up a little bit here, okay? And I will teach you this song. It's got motion, so hang in there, all right? And I'll tell you where the parts come from, all right? So. It's going to sound weird, but once I've taught you cellular respiration, the two songs actually loop together crazily enough. So just trust me on this beginning time. You're going to water some plants four times and you're going to clap on the fifth. It will all make sense later, I promise. So have your watering can. Water, 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 water. Do that with me again. Water, 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 water. So this is our water molecule. And I'll say, what are we going to do? And you're going to say, break it in half. And I say, what do we get? And you go, oxygen and electrons. Notice we are in photosystem two. That's why I'm doing this. And I have two electrons because it's H2O. And then you go like this, sweep, sweep. What does the sweep mean? Well, because it's H2O, the hydrogens donated their electrons, and then the hydrogen ions are staying right here in our thylakoid membrane. Okay, from the top, here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we gonna do? Break it in half. What do you get? 
oxygen and electrons. Sweep, sweep. Now put your hand up here. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Ana -na 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 -na. That's your electron transport chain, okay? So here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Ana -na 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 -na. And then you go PQ, and you remember that like you're going PU, so you remember PQ, and PQ is bringing in hydrogen ions. PQ, and you make some ATP. Mm. Now, when you say mm, then you're going to take your fingers and go like this because now we're transferring to photosystem one. And then you go again. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons and it gets the electrons excited. Ana -na 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 -na. Notice we don't go all the way down. Who catches the electrons? NADP forming reduced NADP. Okay, so let me do that part with you again, okay? So we just make some ATP. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting ready for photosystem one. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. And na 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 who catches it? NADP forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. Yeah, I know it's lame, but you can ask any of my thousands of students. This is what they remember even when they go to college, all right? So one more time, light reaction from the top. Here we go. Water, 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 water. What are we gonna do? Break it in half. What do we get? Oxygen and electrons, sweep, sweep. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Ana -na 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 -na. PQ, and you make some ATP. Mm. Here comes the sun traveling in waves. Particles of light are called photons, and it gets the electrons excited. Ana -na 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 -na. Who catches it? NADP forming reduced NADP. Then you take some ATP and some reduced NADP to the dark reaction or the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. Those are all, <laughs> those are all the same reaction. Okay. And then I will teach you the next part of the song when we learn the next part of this in part three. So I hope that was helpful. Great job.